do with my corny put on a fake persona to do an intro. No, you don't. No, go for it. No, that's what I do every episode. Oh, do it, do it, do it. Is that mm-hmm. my voice recording? Yes. Both uh, of <laughs> I change it all in post anyway, so you will not be yelling. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to keep sitting forward. But you came in fine, so it's, it's fine. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome to episode 22. It's a special episode because it's the first time. I don't know if you know this. First time a girl has been on the podcast. What the fuck? In 22 episodes. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, you know girls. Well, in in my defense, there's only ever been one other guest ever, and it's because Duncan was away. Oh, so it's always Duncan. It's always just Duncan. Uh, though, or just me. Oh, okay. Last week was just me. Okay. And I didn't want to do just me again. No. <laughs> So, I'm Colin. You should know that by now. And with me is my friend, Marsha. Yay. Yay. We are friends that have been friends for 20 years. I don't always talk that awkwardly. Can you please just cut that? Nope. <laughs> I, I've, sto- I've been very vocal. I've stopped editing these in post. It gets annoying. I just fix the noise levels and then that's it. I just throw it up like that. I cut out the racist comments. The, that that the, wasn't the, in the podcast. Where was it? Video. Oh. Uh, so it's fine. Sure? But yes, if I say something racist, that will get cut out. Oh, uh, are you sure I can hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll turn it up later. It's fine. Um, so t- tell people about yourself to put you on the spot. Oh, okay. Because, because normally I just say what I've been doing for a week, but people have never met you. Okay, I'm um, 25. I went to school to teach, or to learn how to be a teacher. I taught for a year in China, and then I came back, and there were no jobs here for teachers. So now I work at a call center. But it's okay. It's a good call center. There's lots of great benefits, like health and dental. Hooray. Um, that's it. I speak Japanese. That's relevant, right? Yes. Okay. Because, because when Duncan's not here, there's a significant like weeaboo portion that's just removed from the show because I actually don't watch that much anime. I don't watch so, much anime anymore no, either. No, but you, you can fill it in better than I can. That's true. You have watched more than I have. I don't know. That might not be and true. And you were watching Kingdom Hearts videos. I mean, we just watched it together. We watched it together, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't count. <coughs> That's in English. Uh, That's pretty much it. Have you been playing anything this week? I know you haven't. No, but... I have. I'm playing Tales of Hysteria. All right. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of not good, but it's okay. Is it Kingdom Hearts good? No, nothing is. It's not even... It's not even Star Ocean good. It's The battle system is too much too convoluted but star ocean is also too convoluted but star ocean doesn't bother trying to explain itself to you it like star ocean until the end of time you have a battle simulator at the start where it attempts to explain the battle system to you but it everything it tells you is irrelevant and not useful at all like you don't actually use any of it and the actual battle system there's no no one tells you how to use it uh see i i didn't like that game I love that I couldn't game. get into it. It's my second favorite RPG. As an adult who understands RPGs a little more, I've never tried to get back into it. I'm sure I'd like it. I don't think... I but... think I played it at the exact appropriate age where I was too young to realize how absolutely shit the graphics, its pacing, and voice acting were, but old enough to be able to play an RPG that was a little bit complicated. Though the first time I played through it, I didn't understand the battle system. There's like these like cancel bonuses, so you do one attack and you cancel halfway through and do another attack, and the second attack is ten percent stronger, and you do it again, it's twenty percent, then fifty, then eighty, then a hundred. And like if you do that, the game is not not too difficult. But if you don't know that you're supposed to do that, and the game never tells you. Uh, now, aren't you on the camp that Star Ocean Three is basically the only Star Ocean game? Almost. Because one and two are too old, and everything past three sucks. They don't suck. That's strong. I mean, I see, I like Star Ocean 4, even though the characters were shitty, because the battle system was wicked. I actually don't remember which one 4 is. Okay, 3 is the one I play. With the I, I know which okay, one okay. 3 is. So 4 is the is uh, FaZe and Raimi and... Is that the one with... 5 is the newest one that's really short, and John John thinks it's too short. It's like okay, then I, I know the fourth one, because it's got that cutscene that makes me laugh, where it says nappy time with edgy. <laughs> yes, that's... See, the characters are shitty. The only the only good characters are, like, the main character, the girl. Sometimes she's not good, but usually she's fine. And the guy with the green hair. The other characters are okay, but it, it like... Like, Star Ocean 3 is good, because it doesn't worry about tropes or stupid bullshit. And then Star Ocean 4 is like, let's have a girl with pink hair and huge tits. And she's in a bikini. Which is fine. But... 
But it's also not fine. But it's just, like, the game is also not very good. So, like, on top of it being a bad... It's like they knew it was a bad game, so trying to sell tits to make the game sell. Do you know what I mean? That actually sounds pretty fair because, like, I don't remember... I don't know any good JRPG that sells itself on tits. That's true. See? that's I think it's just bad and also has tits, and I'm just disappointed. Wait, no, that's not true. Because... 13. 13? On the face of 13. Doesn't sell itself on tits, and is also not very good. I love that game. <laughs> We have different tastes, but I feel like yours are probably more valid. Well, I don't think I it's like a, it. it's not a bad game. I think it's just one of the worst Final oh. Fantasies. Well, bad Final Fantasy, <laughs> bad pizza, it's still pizza. Yeah, that's true. I still, <laughs> I, I mean, I still play them. Um, so yeah, like three is three is good. Four, I didn't play five, but four is okay. I like, I got into four. I only stopped playing it because there was a glitch that came up where it would um, freeze in the middle of the dungeon. And, like, you can't save. It doesn't save anything. So I'd be playing a dungeon for four hours. That sounds great. And then all my stuff was just gone. So I stopped playing it. That's the only reason that I liked it. Well, at least you can back it up. Because most of my arguments just consist of uh, it's bad because I don't like it or it's good because I do. And that's as far as my arguments can go. Not a perfect game. <laughs> three is good. Three, I like... Three is complicated and interesting. There's all kinds of small things. You can, like, item invent. You can... Invite, invent things and equip them to your weapons, make them stronger. So you can be like level 10, but your, your sword can like kill level 80 bosses. There's no level cap, or is or if there is, it's like 299, so that's nice. It's not your traditional 99. Yeah, you can keep going and going and going. And I like it. It's actually like, it's a really mean RPG though, because if your magic runs out, you die. So you can cure somebody else and then die, because your magic reaches zero. Mm -hmm. If um, save points don't rejuvenate your health, what else? Oh, there's some items you can eat that will take away from your, ma your your health. Like, not your health bar, but, like, your max health. Just, like, make it go away. Some of them reduce it to one. And the only way to get it back is to not save the game after you've eaten the item. And the item doesn't tell you what it does. It'll just be called, like, a spicy cake. And if you eat the spicy cake, then you're fucked. Will it then, from then on, tell you what it does? No. So you have to remember. Yeah. That's pretty terrible. It's awesome. I love it. Like, I, I playing it as a child. It was so frustrating. I could do it. And I like it because um, you can, you get, there's like in-game trophies, like it's not system-based, it's just yeah. in the game. So, and you get them and it gives you prizes for getting the trophies. So like you go to all like, you get like 30% and you get a new skin for a character. And like a lot of new games, um, what was I just playing where, oh yeah, Tales of Hysteria, you have to buy skins with real money. Mm -hmm. You can't get them in the game by doing something, you have to just pay money for them. Which is really annoying, because I don't want to pay money. I want them, but I'm not paying money for those I skins. mean... I'm not for paying real money. Like, I think it's stupid. But in all honesty, most RPGs actually just don't have other skins. It's usually just the default. I know, but... It's, it's that's more of a, like, a Western RPG thing to change your clothes. Fine. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it, it's, it doesn't defend it. It's still a bad thing. I don't blow my nose. Are you going to take that out? No. Really? But I will, I will just talk about my week instead. Oh, yeah. Talk about your week. Uh... So I have done nothing new. I'm still playing Kingdom Hearts 2. Yay! How exciting. It's very exciting. Uh, this morning. Uh, also, to anyone who doesn't know, I'm on vacation. So, like, videos are still going up because they've already been filmed. But um, I didn't look up any news for this episode. That's why I needed a guest because I'm on vacation. I wasn't going to look up the news. Uh, so today on my vacation, I decided to start going through my... PlayStation library of games I have not touched. So today I started and beat Abzu. It's very pretty. It's very cool. Did you play Journey? Do you know it what it is? is. Yeah. It's it's Journey Underwater. It's very pretty. That sounds pretty. Uh, yeah. Not much more to say than that. It's it's pretty. Uh, and then I started playing a game called Apotheon. Really cool art style. You know the uh, like the the artwork in Hercules on like not just Hercules I guess but like the Greek art of like on vases and stuff that was the art so it was really cool to look at and I've never seen anything like it unfortunately the gameplay is like it's just bad <laughs> I couldn't like I was like I will at least beat the first zone to say I gave this game a college try I didn't get that far because I couldn't <laughs> deal with it <coughs> uh outside of that what has happened nothing nothing <laughs> yeah um I've never played, I don't know if I've ever played a game and put it down immediately, like not been able to get through the first. Like nothing that makes sense. Well, I'll get, I'll play at least an hour. Like I'll play a, <sighs> like a demo's length. I think I put The Last of Us down really fast. It's a bad, no. I know everyone loves that game. Mm -hmm. It's a really good game. It just isn't for me. That's fair. 
Like, I don't like hiding in video games. Same thing with Metal Gear Solid. I played way more of Metal Gear Solid 4 and 1. I think I played 1 and 4 than I did of The Last of Us. But I don't, I don't know. I didn't like it. You are one of two people that I've talked to this week who are the only people who actually say, it's not for me. Instead of, it's bad. It's not bad. myself and everyone I talk to just says, it's bad. You can't really objectively say that that game is a bad game when it's just not... Like, the story's good, the characters are amazing, it's interesting. I like watching people play it. I think it's just... I just don't like sneaking around zombies, it's not fun. Like, for me, I like to get in arguments with people, and I know that. Oh, so you just say it's so shit. So I'll say <laughs> it's shit, and I don't mean it's shit, but I do mean it to start a fight. I guess that Kingdom Hearts is shit, but I think it was I know, that's a lie. <laughs> it break my soul in half. That's the only reason why it came over. You're like, you bring, them, bring Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, you're the... No, I have... You know, I can get it without you, I don't own it. Yeah. It's the, it's the nostalgia of like playing it together. <laughs> but I, I told you this yesterday, and the reason why I wanted to talk to you is because we can talk about a subject that Duncan would consider a no-no topic because he doesn't like dealing with social justice in those kinds of topics. Is he a white man? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> the lore of the show is he's quite black. But he's not. No, but we, to- we took a, a, a race test, and, and he scored black. <laughs> It's so. always, like, it's really funny to me when, I mean, women feel that way, too. Don't do it. My cat's being a shit. Hey. Get. It's fine. There's, uh, if we, every time we record in my apartment, there's also cats. the cat there. So, like, yeah. the recordings are used to cats being shits. <laughs> so, like, when, when, when people are, like, I don't want to talk about social justice anything, I'm, like, yeah, well, it's supposed to be nothing nice that you don't need to talk about it because it doesn't affect you. Well, I, I, I think it's because... And I'll, I'll be honest, like, don't really know a ton. Oh. Like, if someone who was actually well-educated on, like, diversity or anything else that would fall under the umbrella term of social justice, like, we couldn't... If we actually were against it, which I don't think we are, no. we couldn't back it up. We have no facts on our side. Even if we're <laughs> for it, we just... We have nothing to back it up, so we just stay away from it, because it just comes into a... Oh, it's kind of like, I watched this interview or this video once of all these white people talking about how to write not white people in fantasy books, and it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever seen, just all these white authors talking about how fantasy characters should and should not be dealt with in his books, and I was like, um, it's a little weird. Like, that is what you mean, because you're both white guys, so why would you sit around talking about something that... No, it's just like, say... Um, I can't even think of something. Like, not that they shouldn't have an opinion on co- not not white people in books, but, like... Well, say someone came up to us and they're like, hey, why don't such and such people hire X amount of whatever? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't begin that conversation because I don't have their facts. I don't have, oh. I don't have any facts to counter it. I, I just, probably don't so have... So we just go, um, let's just not talk about it. But... Yeah. You and I talked about some of the stuff last night, and we didn't rip each other's heads off. No, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm. I want to say, as far as having an opinion goes, I try to read and listen extensively to the opposite of what I already think. Because if you do that, then you can know that what you think is actually what you think. Well, Does that makes sense. I think what also helps is like I think you're like pretty open minded. Yeah. I think we're okay. So I think we're both pretty open minded. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't get along. But you're vocal about how you feel, even though you're still open-minded, where I just don't say anything. So, like, it's not a secret. If we're watching something, you'll be like, oh, like, that's a lot of white people. Yeah. And I just will have not noticed. I always notice. <laughs> but I think that's a byproduct of working at the movie theater, watching movie after movie come out, and just watching all the white faces and all the posters, and then reading statistics like, like 97%, sorry, not 97, 90-something percent of people in Hollywood movies are white. And then knowing like 50% of Americans are not white and being like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't match. If it's, I mean, media doesn't have to be a perfect reflection of reality, but that's a big dissonance. It should be at least close, sort of comparable. Yeah. Like, and it's just, there's, and also when I lived overseas and people were like, yeah, black people all have guns and they kill people. And that's really a legitimate thing that the, that people in Asia thought because of Hollywood movies. Okay. You, you want to talk about, like, personal racisms? I was, like, really put in my place by my own Google search. So I can track it all the way back down to when the Black Panther trailer came out. I don't believe this comment, but they did make me 
search something up and find out that I'm an idiot. Uh, they said things like, yeah, I can't wait to see Wakanda uh, because Africa is like one of the smartest countries in the world. It's one of the most developed countries in the world. That's not a country. Continent. Continent. <laughs> well, they were specifically mentioning like a specific country, like, yeah. but I don't remember which one. But yes, you're right. It's cool. I made that mistake before. <laughs> and so I was like, I don't believe that. In fact, that's easily provable that that's not true. Mm. But, and this is another one of those things of because of how media portrays everything, I honestly didn't think there was like any well-developed cities oh. in that entire continent. See, I used to think that until I was about 15 and I like did well, it. Well, so South Africa is I was full late. of people. Well, no, see, I knew yeah. about Sa South Africa because yeah. I know, and it's not a great way, reason to know this, but I know of comedians who have toured there. Yeah. So I know like that's pretty well, but they listed specific cities to Google. And I was like, I totally, like if someone told me this was in any other location, yeah. I totally believe it. But when someone says, oh, that's in, that's such and such city, in yeah. Africa, I would be, I'd have to Google it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't believe you. I, I kind of know what you mean. I thought the same way about um, Bangladesh. Because we had those, do you remember those two girls in high school we used to know from Bangladesh? Yes. So I, they told me they were from Bangladesh and I was, I was like 16 and I said, are there any cities? And they laughed at me and brought up all these amazing pictures that look, it looks like Hong Kong. Like it's just lit up and gorgeous. So it was the same so thing. same idea. Like I didn't know idea. The difference was you were 16 and I'm 24. But well, <laughs> you know, it's fine. But yeah, I, I've had no reason to look into it until now. And, and I was like, like the oh. fact that we don't know isn't the same kind of diversity I mean though, because I don't know what Bangladesh looks like because we live in Canada yeah. or the US, if you want to say that. So an America is not going to have a lot of Bangladesh and it's, movies and I don't think anything is wrong with that exactly no my point was mainly just how the media shows things and how it can totally shape yeah because the only the only like I don't know I don't know it's complicated when you get into that because like Hollywood media goes all over the world yes so that becomes a problem when Hollywood media is like the white people all the time yes all over the world and I don't think people get that it affects the whole planet. Now. But then is it Hollywood's responsibility? No. And then is it though? Like, why no. not? Well, no. Well, I mean, I'll only say it's not. Your shit to the planet. Like. It is. And I, I don't know how to like word this and it not come off negative, but it just seems to be the case. Other than like select few <laughs> cinema everywhere else in the world. And that includes our own country is just garbage. Movies, you mean? Yes. Yeah, movies are garbage. Yeah. Every like most things that everything outside of the United States is mostly trash. Oh, you mean movies from other countries? Yes. Uh, I, mostly. A lot of European movies are pretty good. No, but. I'm saying like I've seen your many European movies that are great. I've seen a few Japanese movies that are great. Korean movies are great, but as a whole, like if they were actually good, like the really big movies do get translated and come but here. The thing is, are they? You can't just say they're garbage. Are they garbage, or are, is the like money just in our culture where we like a certain thing? Where no, that, like no, it? that's part of it. Is because they try to do ambitious things, but they can't because the money's not there. We have it. Or like, but no, I mean like, um, like I watched a few European movies and they're kind of slow paced and they're not as actiony, and people from the West probably wouldn't like it because it's not as intense. Does that make it bad just because we don't like it? And are we the people that have to like it for it to be considered good? Yes. So, it's, you know, like, it's not really bad. It's just they're not in vogue. It's just not popular. Well, I mean, no country's media is proliferated around the world as much as Hollywood. That's what, yeah. 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 So, you're kind of... That's why I think Hollywood should be a little bit more... Well, no, but I think if... Not white, because the world's not white. Now, there, there is a lot of garbage that comes out of Hollywood. So but I, I think if there was... The best movies also, in my opinion, also come out of Hollywood. Ah, uh, mm. I disagree with you. I, I honestly, I probably disagree with myself on that one. I'm trying to think of like a really like. No, you were saying your point. Finish your point first. I don't know what I was going I with anyway. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I like Hollywood movies and mm. I enjoy them as a form of entertainment, but I don't think that they're usually good. I think that they're the same thing over and over again. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna backpedal and say it's probably right across the board equal of uh, most movies are just garbage doesn't matter what country y yeah. it's just some are good everywhere but I just watch more Hollywood movies because I'm uh, an English speaker and that's the easiest movies to watch perhaps so like 
I, I the only movies I've ever watched and really really liked are Igmar Bergman. So I think I'm saying his name right. He's like a Polish maybe sure director from 1970. The name rings a bell, but like and I... it's kind of like like if you ask a film buff about it, they'll know what it is. I did film buff in quotation marks just so everybody knows. <laughs> just I don't know what word to use. So when we were in my literature class, even though it was a literature course, we studied some of his movies, mm-hmm. and I think they're good because he. They use film to make metaphors, and they use. It's just it's nice. I don't know how to, it's like. It's like reading a book where I, you have to like pick it apart and to figure out what it means. It all comes down to it's. I mean, it's all just subjective, because yeah. like okay, there's a, a film critic who you and I both like because we were talking about it yesterday, which is a your your movie suck, who I think definitely knows what he's talking about. He's a big fan of film. His favorite movie and what he would consider the greatest movie ever made, I've watched and I think it's utter garbage. What movie? It's unwatchable other than the first five minutes, which I think the first five minutes is one of the best things I've ever seen. But after that, it falls apart and it's nonsense. It's uh, Synecdoche, New York. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I watch his videos. I don't like care about movies. I think I watch them because I don't know anything about movies. Could My be. favorite film critic is a girl online. What's her name? Oh, no. Ellie's? Ooh, well, I watch him because I think he's funny, not so much because he's a film critic. Yeah, Because I found his videos through him reviewing Nana Lan, <laughs> which doesn't need to be done. I found him through I Hate Everything, and I found I Hate Everything when I was in China. I forget why. But anyway, the girl who reviews film doesn't, like, call them shit. She's just, like, she talks about why film does what it does or, like, what it's trying to do. Like, she's the one I watched the video about aliens. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> where they want you to relate to an alien, they'll give it human eyes, they'll give it human features. Or, if it doesn't look human, you have more screen time with it, you get to know it. And she doesn't say it's good or bad things, she just, just, just like points things out. But no, I could, I could totally agree with that. Yeah, same thing with the Transformers thing, where like they're all boys, and she's like, no, it's not good or bad that they're all boys, but like we do have to talk, we should talk about it. Be like, they're all boys, they're all coded male, and then there is there are female Transformers in every other I Transformer I think you're media. missing that um, all of them have had a girl. What do you mean? They've all had a girl. That's pretty diverse. What do you mean? All the Transformers movies. There's, no, I don't mean a girls. human girl. I mean a Transformer girl. That's enough girls. I'm giving you one. <laughs> no. One girl's not enough. We're not in the 90s anymore. But she's just like, she's not like, like saying that they're sexist or whatever. She just says like, she just like presents information. So it's nice, I guess. And she's like. Telling you how they had a girl and they were going to put her in, but they didn't. And then why they didn't. And then she starts talking about how um, the reason they didn't put the girl in. What's her name? A Cree? Do you know? Sure. The Transformer girl? I I, I don't know who we're talking about. Oh, the Transformer girls, they're they're canon. Like, there are female Transformers in every other iteration of Transformers. Oh, sure. I don't like Transformers, so I don't I don't don't like the movies. I, I don't... I've just never liked... The any, whole of, thing? any of it. What? It's never. It's just not for me. Were you not 10 at some point? I was, but I just only watched Digimon. I also watched Digimon. I had more <laughs> no, than one. No, but that was it. <laughs> so, she's talking about, they, they didn't put the girls in because the writers thought there wouldn't be enough time to explain why there were females, Transformers. And I said, well, the fact that you'd have to explain that, but you don't have to explain why all the Transformers are coded male, why, like, one of them's got a beard. They're all obviously men. I mean, they're not, they're not human, but they're masculine. Yeah. And you don't have to explain that, but you would have to explain why they're women. And she talks about, like, why is that? She's like, you should ask yourself why... That's a thing. And then I just, I like it. You know what? I know why. I can answer that question for you. <laughs> because male is a default and the female is a deviation. No, like you're, you're Mickey right. Mouse and Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck. Male is a default, female is a deviation from it. That's a thing in media. That's been a thing in media forever. Bugs well, because I'm trying Babs, to think. Lola, no, Bugs Bunny, Lola Bunny, Lola, yeah. Buster Bunny, and Babs Bunny. Is that right? Those are their names. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so they always have like the male who's like the thing in the DVD. Well, I mean, let's. I mean, you could go back to the OG, which is Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Oh, and Miss Pac-Man just has a bow. Yeah, like that's what I mean. <laughs> like she's a deviation, and so that's why you have male Transformers and don't have to explain it. But females suddenly need an explanation. I don't think it would need an explanation. I'm trying to think. I think you could just have them in there and not say how. Or, let's just don't talk. Put about yourself it. back. Yeah into when the first Transformers movie came out. I think... Those were dark times. <laughs> I would actually, like... As someone who I'm not really bothered by this shit, I think at that time, if Transformers came out and they were all women... Like, say, like, not Optimus Prime's a girl, because we know Optimus Prime's a guy. 
but like it was all the female Transformers, which the first movie came out well before this gender thing was like the huge hubbub. So like I don't know if it would be a huge deal back then. Yeah, it would have. But been. I'm trying to think if it would be. It well, no, like... if, if they were all Girls. previously established female Transformers. You mean if they had female Transformers back when the cartoons came out? No, like, like the, the, whole the time? first Michael Bay movie. No, it would it would have been a big deal. People would be angry. No, this whole gender thing only matters to us because we're old enough to even notice it. I guess. It's not that it, it didn't come out of nowhere when we turned to adults. It's I been don't around know. forever. It, it feels like... It's not true. When I study feminist <laughs> theory in, in literature classes, which is feminist theory yeah. in literature is different than like feminism in pop culture. Well, no, like... Don't go That's around. been around... I know it's existed. For that, like a thousand years. But I mean like <laughs> with, with social media, it feels like it exploded... Like, not to say it didn't exist before that. I guess I don't know. I never paid attention to it when we were younger. I didn't care. Well, no, I think I think that's also part of it. But I, do I think, also yeah. didn't pay attention to it. So I think if it. we were older, we would have talked about it more. And, like, the sexism never really mattered to me until I hit puberty and then the things were gross. But, like, I, I think about, uh, like, my parents have never said anything about it. My mother did. She, she said in, uh, in her line of work that... There are many promotions she did not get that men got who would work there less time because they were... Well, okay, my parents are also a really bad example because they were they're hillbillies. And, <laughs> and my mother couldn't get... My mother had... I don't know if I should say it. My mother wanted a medical procedure. N- nobody knows who your mother is. That's fine. My mother was trying to have a medical procedure <laughs> that only women can get mm-hmm. to deal with a female problem mm-hmm. your period. Mm-hmm. And the doctor wouldn't give it to her. Mm-hmm. The doctor's a male... And so you're kind of like, she's in incredible pain. Gotcha. I'm like, I don't know. Though, like, I'm not, maybe that's not a fair example. Maybe he was looking out for her. But I also don't know. So there were some things that came up when I was growing up. But nothing major. Basically, when you're a girl and you hit puberty, you're just dealing with a bunch of Can you think shit. of the first time? Now, because it probably happened to you first. Can you think of the first time where you, like, something ticked of like, oh. That was sexist, you mean? Yeah, or... Like, this is happening because I'm a girl? Type yeah. Uh, one time in a high school, one of my friends says, girls can't be funny, only boys can be funny. And she meant it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's not true. I do think that a lot of humor is, like, quote-unquote male. Like, but that doesn't mean a girl can't do it, or that girls can't have some kind of female humor. Yeah. Like, it, it just, like, like, saying girls aren't funny is not true. Saying more often than not, men are funny might be true, but... I mean, I saw a documentary called Women Aren't Funny, so... Therefore. <laughs> it, it was about how funny. And then, like, when I was 15 and working at Zeller's, I had guys cat call me once. And that was the first time that's ever happened. Like, that... Is it weird that I want to experience cat calling? You never been cat called by a group of men before? No. Would it make you feel, like, unsafe? I felt unsafe. But I was really young, too. I was Probably. pretty young. And I was like, basically, like, I know I was 15 and I had, like, breasts and everything, but I was still a kid, right? Yeah. And I was, like, going to work. I would, like, have my, probably, like, gravitation backpack and my little anime stuff. And I was, like, going to work. And some dude was like, nice tits, bitch. And I was like, ah. So, that happens. And I feel like the rebuttal to that is, like, men feel uncomfortable, too. And I'm like, yeah, but not, not like that. I feel like it's different. Well, okay. So, as someone who, like, I've, I've been semi-vocal with certain friends of mine that, like, I grew up, like, a pretty insecure kid. I would say more insecure than normal, but I also don't know what the norm is. But I kind of agree with you. Having not experienced the same things, I can't say if it is equal, but I'm not going to say it is because I don't know. I think it's different because, like, I, I don't walk around. I, like, I walk, I don't walk around, around alone at night. Or, like, when I, I got on a date last weekend and I got really drunk and I, I had to ask him... I was either going to take a cab Mm -hmm. or uh, get him to walk me home. I wasn't going to walk home alone. And that's because I'm a girl. Uh, When I moved to Halifax, I judged how safe the city was by if I saw girls walking alone. Right? So, (laughs) like, I... Like, you'd probably be fine, but do you really want to... And the fact that I have to worry about that, or, like, girls have to worry about it, I feel like it's not... I feel like saying that sexism is a thing is not crazy. No. Like, I think that's a... But people think it is. People think that doesn't okay. exist. And do you, I'm like, do you even think some it's... girls think it doesn't exist. Oh, I definitely know and some I'm who like, do. But, but I'm like, but how do you... Don't you feel it? Do you think it's as systemic as people say? Like, I will not... Uh... I won't even remotely argue that, like, some people are definitely sexist. 
I don't well, yeah, care for a like, minute. Of course. So some people are blatantly like, women should be home. Because the- they don't even matter, though. Like, they're not even relevant to the conversation we're having. But on a systemic <laughs> level, which I guess is the real problem, because you'll never change everyone individually. That'll just never happen. Is systemic sexism real? I think systemic stereotyping by gender is real. Do you think it's going away because just people are growing up? We know more? Like, like we're adults now. In... 30, 40 years when we are, like, as an example, the head of whatever field we're currently doing, blah, 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 we're not going to suddenly be like, yeah, you're right, women do suck. (laughs) It's not like we'll keep our current opinions and the people who, like, the people currently in charge had their formative years when it was cool to still hit your wife. Like, so I think it's changing. Maybe. I think it has to change, but if history has taught us anything, it's that people are retroactive. So, I mean, there's problems. There's I'm going to totally <laughs> argue against myself here. There are problems with women joining the workforce mm-hmm. and with this whole gender equality. Not gender equality, but men and women being afforded the same right with gender equality. Okay. So women used to be at home and cook and take care of the house. And that was actually very good for society. The good old days. That was actually very good for society because if if she was good at doing that, then you got a clean home, kids had somewhere to go if they were sick, um, you ate healthier. It it was was good for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. And so now, and women lived longer than men back in the day because we weren't so stressed out. But now that everyone's in the workforce, people have less kids Mm -hmm. and they don't eat as healthy. Mm -hmm. It's fast food. I really like this. So there are some good things about it, but there's, I think that the, I don't know, why am I saying this again? I don't know. There's was, there was somewhere I was going with this. I don't know. But I think overall it's bad because forcing someone into a societal role is stupid. Okay, so I'm going to just like randomly like gun topics at you that have been thrown at me throughout like. But there's somewhere I was reason I was saying that. Well, if you think of it, just <laughs> stop me and we'll go it's back to good, it. It's not good though. You shouldn't force someone to do that thing. No, things. I I think... Even, like, ignoring sexism, you shouldn't force anyone to do anything. You shouldn't be like, you're this person, therefore you have to do this with your yeah. life. Like, but... Yeah. Um, so... Shit. Where was I going? Well, I can talk about systemic sexism some more. Good. So, like, is sexism systemic? I don't know. I think that a lot of gender coding is. Like, the idea that women are less aggressive... Mm-hmm is a system in culture. The fact that when I sit in, I'm gonna move like anyone can see me, when I sit in a small space, I do this, Mm -hmm. or I do this, and guys do this, like spread their legs open and girls like this. I think that's systematic. There's nothing about my sex or my gender or my hormones or anything that makes me take up a small amount of space. I think that's systematic. Now what happens when, because the the counter argument to that is, well, I'm I'm a guy and I don't sit with my legs way open like this. So, but you'd still like, like I would never sit like, like you're sitting here, like, you've been sitting like this for a while, yes. like your legs open. I have testicles. See, I don't think that that matters. It does a little bit actually. Cause if I were to just close my legs a- as is, it would actually cause me pain. Okay. I don't have the penis, so I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, there's a different, like I was sitting. I was but you are right. I usually will have them open. N- not and you have space to do not it. Not right like now, right? comically open. Yeah, but, but like when yes, you're, they when are you're in more a small open. space, do you do this still? No, so I'm some, usually a lot of men polite. do. Like, I think I they're have, dicks. I have sat in the back of cabs with four of us in the back and had one guy sit with his legs wide open that I know and I love him, but he does that. And I think that that kind of behavior, just a simple example, is coded behavior. Yeah. And just like how um, I'm like I'm not an aggressive person like 99 percent of the time, and I do think it's because I was not only born with less testosterone, but raised to be that way in a society that says women are not supposed to be aggressive. I also recognize that literally testosterone makes you aggressive. So it's both. Yes. But it's like, it's like since testosterone makes men aggressive, society's like men are aggressive. And then it just like further enhances that part of it. So I think those are systematic. I mean, that's not even really systematic. That's, I mean, testosterone, that's a genetic thing. No, see, that's an, that's the argument. This is the argument. There's people... Some people think that you can only have two genders. Some people think you can say, screw the gender binary and I'm something else. Mm-hmm. And the argument in between that, the thing that they're fighting over, that they don't seem, anyone seems, no one seems to realize this is the problem, is nature versus nurture. Yeah. Is gender cultural or is it, like, a, like a, a cultural, is it a con construct or is it tied to your sex? Both. Right. So what I'm saying is it's both. 
I, I also not not gender, but the thing I was well. talking about, like system, systematic sexism, mm-hmm. comes from nature, mm-hmm. and it's also in our culture. And since it's in our culture, it's on our televisions, in our books, and it's in our media, and that makes it systematic. It's in the system that we live in. That's Therefore, fair. I guess when I say when I say systematic, I, I think like level of government. And then when you bring in testosterone, I'm like those aren't really connected. No, but you are right. Yeah, like the testosterone creates the stereotype, and then we reinforce it in our everything we do. Yes. So I think that's systematic. Is that sexism? I don't know. Like it's I don't really think it's a bad thing that women are more nurturing than men. Yeah. But I do think it becomes a bad thing when you have a woman who's not nurturing and you don't like her because she's not who she's quote unquote supposed to be as a woman. Do you know what I mean? Like I wish stay at home dads were just chill. I wish it was like, yeah, men are usually like this, but when they're not like this, we don't give a crap. Yes. Right? Sure. What do you mean sure? Wouldn't that be better? Yeah. That way if you have men who fit your stereotype, they can rock it, whatever. And then if you have men that don't, they don't have to feel bad. They can just... Be a dad. Well, because, like, to. neither of you or I fit the stereotype of man or woman. Uh, you, you know, you, <laughs> you are by no means, like, and I don't mean this rudely, like, you're not quiet. Like, you're pretty vocal about your opinion. You don't just, you know, do as you're told type thing. And I'm the total opposite, where I am actually usually quite quiet and I just don't yeah. do anything. But, so, yeah, we, we're people who can talk about it. Yeah. We are on the outside. Actually, I would like to really talk to, like, a quote-unquote, like, super girly girl and, like, a manly man and see, like, where they feel. Because most of the people I talk to fit in that neither I find, category. I find that their, their, their tendencies to fit the stereotype don't alter their opinions very much. Like, I've met plenty of girly girls who are like, you should, same opinion I just had. Oh, no, I'm sure they are. It's yeah. just I've never talked to them. I've also met the masculine men and the same opinion. They're like, I like doing this. I feel good, but it shouldn't be necessary. Like it shouldn't be. It just shouldn't be necessary. It's just so stupid. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so uh, there's, a, there's a handful of things that keep going through my head that I want to talk about. So the first one we'll bring up to keep on the sort of systemic level, I guess, is the question always keeps getting brought up. It's always been thrown around the wage gap. Oh, that? Where do you sit on that? So, like, the and, way... this, and this goes exactly to what we were so, talking about before. It's confusing. No facts. So, as so. far as I know, this wage gap thing works like this. You take, you take men and women, how much money they make, and you see how much, what the difference is. Yes. And the average difference in Canada is 75 cents. Is that right? I think it's like 77. Yeah. But... So people think that that means that men and women, like men get paid 77 cents more for the exact same job. Yes. That's not what it means. No. Okay, good. We're both on the same page. So what are you asking me? Well, I was wondering how you felt about it. Well, cause, because some people are pretty how I feel adamant about, the about... the fact that women make less money? But they make less money because they work in fields that are considered less important by society. Well, no, that, that's the, what I was going to argue. But you don't disagree with me. No, I don't. So it's totally <laughs> fine. It's just... Well, that's just it. I mean, like, you could ask yourself, why does society not care about things that women like to do? But I don't think you can make the argument that they don't care because women are doing them. Well, the... the... I think that... That women do them, and so they were never seen as important because women are always secondary. In like, like, edu- like, for example, you have if the military wants to make some kind of new weapon for something, the government just funds them. Yeah. If a school wants to raise money, fake sale. Yes. Well, okay. I mean, I schools a, schools like needs... a bad example because I think all teachers should currently make way more than they make. Oh yes. <laughs> See, I've done that job, and yes. Well, I have watched people do that job, and okay, yeah, so like yes. in in my realm, something and, the, that, and it should be harder to become a teacher. Something that's more in my realm is than yours, anyway, is sports. And don't get me wrong, I think certain athletes deserve to be paid a high <coughs> amount of money. It's a very hard thing to do, <coughs> but they don't need to be paid as much as they do. Oh, well, male athletes also get paid way more than female athletes. Oh, probably like well, a well, ridiculous well, amount. The reason for that is nobody watches female sports. So why? It's typically not as good. Is that true? Yes. I don't think so. No, that that is the assumption. Oh, that's fair. That the skill level is not as I high. I feel like it's all just a circle. Like it's not as good because people don't care about it, and then people don't care about it, so it ends up not being good. Like no money goes into it. No, yeah, no one no, wants it's, to fund it's a female totally sports a circle. team. It's just a vague vicious so, cycle. If for no me, one cares. Like I only watch one sport. I, I don't watch female sports. I only watch <laughs> MMA. My favorite fighter is a female, and that's not me trying to cover my ass. That's just a fact. She, mm-hmm. my favorite fighter, is a girl, and I think they're. I think. 
MMA is helping female sports as a whole because you see these women kicking the shit out of each other just like the guys do. Yeah. And you go, oh, they're really Did the same? Did I tell same? you? I played, I played the soccer league in China, an all-male soccer league. Yeah. Did I let you know? You mentioned it. So it was a it was a shit show. I didn't know it was an all male league when I joined. I wasn't like I I know I'm sitting here talking about gender, but I don't I'm not the kind of person that rushes in and like says, Equality for all, let me play on the boys team. I didn't. I thought You just signed up for it. They advertised it as a team for teachers. My guy friend was like, Hey, let's join. He didn't know either. So I just I signed up and then I got into the group chat on the on our phones Mm -hmm. and noticed they were all men and I was like, Oh, so I just sent a message. I was like, Are girls allowed to join? And I would be like, okay, it's fine if I'm not. And they all, the guys on the team said, yeah, it's no big deal. I think it's okay. And then the um, coach of the team, who was an older man, came to my classroom and said, look, Marsha, it's competitive. You've never played soccer before. I really don't think you should come. And I looked at him, and I was like, is it really because I haven't played soccer before, or is it because I'm a girl? And he said, it's because you haven't played soccer before. So I said, okay, well, these other two boys, if you're being so nice, also have never played soccer before. So make sure you go talk to them. Do you think he talked to them? No. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, I think he sent one a text, but he didn't go into their classrooms and talk to them. So my uh, final stance was to not join the team. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to because, I'm, I, again, like if they don't want me there, then I don't want to be there. I'm not, I wasn't there to prove a point. I just... Yeah, you just wanted to play soccer. I just wanted to play soccer. <laughs> so then I, went, I left my classroom at the end of the day, and then the captain of the team, who was a the fellow teacher and a really good friend of mine, who I, like, he's like 12 years older than me, and I'm married with kids and a house, and I look up to him so much. And he he's good friends with the coach who told me not to join, and he said, Marsha, look, I don't want to get in between two friends, but I really think you shouldn't join the team. And I wasn't going to, but he like him not being on my side made me cry. I was like so upset. Mm-hmm. Not because I couldn't join the team, but because he chose his older male friend over me. Yes. And so I didn't want to do the thing where you cry to get your way. I didn't want to be that you know girl. So I tried. I left and cried in my apartment. <laughs> but he he and then I was angry again. Not because I couldn't join the team, just because my of my friend. Yeah. You know. So I went for a run because that's what I do when I get angry. I go running. Then I came back. And it turns out that all the whole the whole soccer team had gone to my apartment looking for me to tell me I was joining the team. Literally, the only person who cared was that coach. Yeah. The team didn't care, and my friend didn't care. So he came back at the end of the day to my apartment and apologized, and he brought the jersey and like put it over my head and said, "Like you're on the team." And then I joined the team, mm-hmm. and the whole soccer league never was a problem. I got kicked in the face. Grown men knocked me down. I got bruised and hit, and soccer balls in the face, and almost everything. like you were someone who doesn't play soccer in a competitive league. But the thing is, like, nobody cared that I was a girl. No, and I, like, that's fine. Nobody, it, d- it didn't matter. I was so nervous, and then, I forget why I'm telling you this, but, like, no one gave a shit. It's like I wasn't a girl. I actually think that's a, a thing with a lot of things where... It was not a problem. If you were to ask the people involved, they probably wouldn't care, but the rules are, oh, you can't. But there wasn't a rule. Like, the rules well, no, were not that I could I'm not remember. using just that example. Like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't join things. a league that was actually... A real league or something. Anyway. So, that was stupid. It was just really dumb. I joined the team and no one cared. Like, the other guys didn't care. I had a few times where I used my gender to my advantage because they were too afraid to run into me sometimes. Or, like, they would stop before they ran into me and I would just take the ball and go and be like... Yeah, that's fine. That's their fault. Exactly. (laughs) But, like, overall, it was not an issue. Okay. Anyway, sorry. That was a tangent. No, it's fine. But it was really fun. that I was on, on, like, an all-male sports team. We had, like, jerseys and parties. It was amazing. And I got to play against the coach who didn't want me to join the team. Did you win? I kicked his butt. I was hoping but he's that. old and haggard. A little bit me wanted you to say you lost. No. Just a little, why? Just a little bit. Why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. A- acting. Okay. How do you feel when someone is cast to play something that is not them? Oh, like when trans actors or you actors that... You got it. Yeah. Um, actors that aren't trans plays trans characters? How do I feel? I wish it wasn't a problem, I guess is how I feel. Because... I wish I lived in a world where it just didn't matter. It's like, it's like when, when a blue-eyed character plays a brown-eyed character and they just put brown lenses in, it doesn't fucking matter. I wish well, it was okay, like Okay, so like, I see, I think I see both sides of this argument. Yeah. Because like, if you were to say... How many trans actors are there? Not many. I can... The fact that I don't know I can that. name one. Liver and Cox. That's it. <laughs> <coughs> I'm, I'm sure there are more. Uh, if you use the argument of like, oh, well, what if they... 
hired a black person or a white person to play vice versa, which has happened and people lose their goddamn minds about. I think that's bad, but I don't know why I think that's bad and trans isn't bad. But the other thing is, like, when you use the other argument of, like, acting is supposed to be playing someone you're not. And I'm like, that's a pretty fair argument. Like, it's, and I'm not saying put white people in blackface. That's a step too far. But, like, to hire a non-trans actor to play a trans character. But why is it a step too far? What's the difference? Like, to why, put someone in blackface? Why am I not okay with blackface, but I might be okay if a, a cis woman plays a trans character? What's it? Does race matter? I guess race is more of a... Ex, ex, is it more of an experience in gender? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's, there should be a difference. As, as white people, this is a very hard... <laughs> as non-trans white people, this is a very tough question. We should find out, though. I'll do some research and, like, figure that out. Because I'm super not okay with blackface. Like, it just rubs me the wrong no, way well, entirely. But, oh, I think the thing I mean, with Shakespeare, blackface, though... Shakespeare used to do it. Well, yeah, but we were all raised that blackface is a no-no. Yeah, it could just be. We weren't really raised that... Well, really, I just... I guess the racism is more obvious yes. than people when they hate trans people because there's less trans people and the whole situation is quieter. Maybe? Yes. That's why it seems okay, but it's just probably not okay. I mean, I'd rather have a trans person play a trans character. It looks more authentic. Oh, God, that's a shitty thing to say. No, I mean, you're right. It feels more authentic. Like, I was watching um, K-19, I think it's called. It's a movie on Netflix. Sure. And there's a there's supposed to be a trans character in it, but it's it's a. Is that the one in the prison? Yeah. Yeah, we watched that together. And. It I don't know like cause trans like, oh trans woman is just a woman that's the point yes it's just a woman okay so there's two like really well known situations of, of this and I both think they're like they're both very well known as like being good movies well one's a TV show but they're both straight people. <laughs> playing trans people you mean cis people trans yes. people you followed okay so like the big one is Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club I thought did a fantastic job and the other one being I can't remember the guy's name but he's got one of those faces that like you never know his name but you see his face you go oh yeah that guy's been in a billion things uh-huh. he's in a show called Transparent oh. uh, and it's a very... is it about a trans parent who's I guess. also trans oh my god that would be amazing well it's about like uh Someone later in life discovering, oh, I'm actually a woman. I guess you have to ask the question, oh, can you hear me? Maybe. <laughs> I, guess I you don't have know. have to ask the question if cis people can play a trans character. Like, can straight people accurately play gay characters? Like, can a cis person really play a trans character? I mean, I guess that really comes down to how the character's written. But then, if, if the whole point of being trans is that you're just a woman... But no, but your situation is different. Because if your whole point, if you're trans, but you're you're a woman. Yes. A trans woman, but you're a woman. Then shouldn't a woman be able to play a trans woman? But then your situation is different. Because you had to go through more shit to be a woman. I guess maybe. Or to look like a woman. Or to like be accepted as a woman. Or, I, I don't think, know how to say it right. Actually, I think it does all come down to the writing. I think, I think for the acting part, it shouldn't matter too much. Because you should just be hiring the best person for the job. But I think if you're writing a story about someone transitioning and you don't have anyone on the staff oh, who who's has not, transitioned, yeah, that could get rid of the, the not the mm-hmm. the whole problem, <laughs> but like right because you never you never write a movie like oh what was that really good movie I saw about the gay couple one dies in a car accident oh you should you know it I probably do it's really friggin' sad but like anyway they they had to have a gay guy or something talking about what it's like to be a gay man when no one wants you to be a gay man and you can't go to your dead boyfriend's funeral because no one knows you've been together for 12 years well it's like Like, I I could write a female character and you could write a male character yeah pretty easily yeah I couldn't and I could write a trans character I could write a gay character but if it came up if it came up hey oh I'm writing what is this about like hey explain what it's like being gay or being trans then I'd be like, I'm, I'm out, running into that I don't problem know. with my book because there is a trans character, and for the most part, the fact that he's trans doesn't come up. Yeah, because he just. But is. it does once. But it does eventually because he has a boyfriend, and that boyfriend does not know that he's trans, mm-hmm. and so we have to tell him at some point. And I don't, I don't know how to write it. Yeah, well, I can, I, I, think can that... I can it to coming out to my parents. Is kin is that a verb? Can you make a? Sure. I can see it. It's kind of, I can like compare it to coming out to my parents, but it's not the same. And I know some trans people, but not 
Like, uh, one Not of the, well enough to ask them the question? Well, I probably could message them and be like, I'm writing a book and I want to ask you some questions. If you're at all uncomfortable, just tell me not to. Because I dated a person in high school who's trans mm-hmm. or transitioned since then. And I could probably ask him. He probably wouldn't mind. But also might be really like a not a good experience for him. I don't know, but I'm running into that problem with stuff because I have one trans. But, but I think that probably goes for even something not gender related. If just something super niche. I could write... You know, a story of a guy who rides motorbikes for a living, but You'd have to if, some, if someone was like, how does it feel to ride <laughs> motorbikes for a living? I'd be like, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, that's part of being a writer. You have to talk to people and try to figure it out. Like I had, a, I was trying to create a culture and I have a friend from Ghana and I was like trying to base the religion, the culture off a religion that isn't in Ghana. Mm-hmm. And I was like, can you talk to me about this for 10 minutes? So yeah, you have to have people who know what they're doing. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to write a trans character and then not consult or have someone who knows what's up that's fair i think that can get rid of a lot, a lot of the problems but i do get that people want to see real trans people on television too yeah like i understand like like if i'm watching a movie and i know that this actor is playing a gay character but i know he's or she is not really gay then i can feel it like i know that they're just acting because i know that i think i mean gay. i think that's just a problem like okay so the original star wars didn't want to run into that problem so they cast nobodies I mean, at now they're everyone knows who. I mean, Jared yeah. Fisher, Harrison Ford, is and all that. But at the time, they were nobody. We said nobody. So I was like Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> what do you mean? Nobody's? And like, <laughs> I get that that's a literal impossibility. You can't hire a nobody for every movie. You could actually. It's not. It's not impossible at all. Well, no, but like, how do you get experience being in movies? And the best way to get good people is experienced people, and blah, blah, blah. it would it would cause problems. But I think that is just a problem with actors in general is when you know the actor yeah. you're like I'm kind of out of this because yeah, I, I know who I you know. are I've seen you t- it's, like, it's like when Daniel Radcliffe does anything yeah. you're like Harry okay. Potter it's Harry Potter I watched a movie I mean, he's a good actor but a fantastic thriller with him in it I talked about it on this podcast quite some time ago called Imperium and it was uh, like it's a super insane crime thriller where he plays an FBI agent and he's infiltrating a uh, white supremacist group but at the start of the movie, before he goes undercover, he just plays a dork at the C- at the FBI in glasses. I'm like, what is Harry Potter doing at the FBI? But once he shaved his head, I could at least like be like, okay, that's I find not like Harry Potter anymore. Oh, his stage performances are better because like he's with he's really short yeah. actually, so he's with all these tall like half naked men, and I'm like, I can get behind this. I don't know. I think that's an issue too when you watch it. But like I watched that movie with the two gay guys, and I knew both the actors, and I bought it. I guess I mean I think that again just comes down to the writing or directing maybe it's just yeah because if it's done well sometimes you can tell they're uncomfortable acting gay scenes you can see it and you're like you don't want to be doing this no okay not not media related (laughs) do you think people are I guess I think I answered my own question in my head but do you think people are sticks in the mud if they're so like like say you're fine with gay people but you're like I want to touch a boy. Like, not even... I'm not even talking, like... Okay, say if I was asking a guy, like, hey, are you cool with gay people? He'd be like, yeah, fine. But, like, don't touch me. And I... And there are people like that. Oh, you mean, like... like Who are so uncomfortable... With the idea that they even might, like... Yes. With any affection from the same gender? Yeah, that's just hyper-masculinity. It's just silly. Yes. It's just silly. Have you ever met a woman like that? No. Because I haven't. No, they don't exist. Because women are, like... You just grow up being affectionate. It's not a big deal. Like, even like when I came out as bisexual, I was afraid that my girlfriends wouldn't want to hug me anymore because there's, like... I, I was afraid they'd think I was coming on to them. you gay. <laughs> but it never happened. They didn't care. They still don't care. They still get naked in front of me. Okay, so and one I get thing... Naked fr- it doesn't matter. Like, it... One thing when that you're is a girl, totally... it just doesn't matter. Well, okay. He, you're, here, here's you can my... separate nudity from being sexy. I don't, I don't know if you can. You can. Because they do it all the time. Yeah, no, I mean, you can. Yeah. I know that. But so, one thing that's way more common with guys is they are totally, even well into adulthood, not cool with changing in front of each other. I yeah. know. That's so weird to me. But it's not in every culture, it's in this culture. Well, yeah, but in, we're, in, I'm in this culture, so I'm talking about this in one. In Japan, they get naked and go to well, bathhouses well, together. Course. I don't give a shit. Ta- well, really, other than here. Bathhouses are pretty common. Yeah. I'm not really sure what it, like... 
Like I said, like to me, it's like if you know that you're not gay, then you're not gay. You don't have to worry about but it. But like if you're worried about it, like maybe you're gay. <laughs> well, that's why I'm so curious, like why it affects men so much. Because like even as a... Systemic gender coding. Sure, but I, I don't know enough about <laughs> that shit. But it's one of those things where like even as a even as a young kid, like I knew just from like girls telling me that like they don't care if they change in front of each other. I used to pee in front of my friends when we were kids. Yeah, it, but dudes are, no, that's, that's pretty gay. I don't, I don't know. I know people in there who are older than me. There's a really cool picture. Who still won't do it. It's a really cool picture on Tumblr that I like put on my favorites in my blog. It's these two full grown, super masculine men. I think one of the guys is the actor who play Thor, plays Thor. And the two bustly, super masculine men, but they're really affectionate physically, but they're mm-hmm. just friends. And they're both straight. And it's the nicest thing I've ever seen. Well, yeah. Well, like for because me. Because they're like, they're big, burly men, but they hug and they like hold each other and kiss each other on the cheek like girls do. And it's nice. Because now, I don't kiss anyone on the cheek, but, like, guy or girl, uh, like, people just hug your friends. Yeah. Like. They should. Yeah. I actually see a lot of grown men here in, like, in our city do that. Like, my, my dad will hug his guy friends. Good. He should. Because it's just a hug, and it's it's good serotonin, man. Who doesn't like that? What? N- nothing. What? I was going to say, uh, my dad doesn't hug his friends because he's dead. Oh, no. It's not funny. I made myself laugh. Your eyes are wet. Because it was kind of funny. Yeah, it sucks. My dad's dead. It sucks. <laughs> uh, actually, that's the first time I've ever said that on here. I just said I was out for personal reasons at the time. It's shitty. If you go, if you guys go back a couple weeks, uh, that's why. Because uh, there was like a week where I just did nothing. And I just tweeted out, I'm like, I'm going to be away for a while. That's what happened. If you need anything, my parents are here. I know you have a mom still. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'm not good at it because I'm so... Look, look I'm so I, I am... practical about death and I just fucking hate it. I am very... Op- like, I think people think I'm lying when I say, like, I'm totally cool with jokes about my dead father. Humor is the only appropriate response to death. There's no other response <laughs> that makes sense because death is stupid. Yeah. And meaningless. I think... Je- and je- horrible. Like, so many of my friends will, like, they'll think, like, a joke will come to their head. Yeah. And they'll go, I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, now you're calling attention to it. Like, yeah. if you would have just, just said it. Or just not said anything. Yeah. Please. So, yeah. But I mean that if you need something and that your dad would do for you that he's not around to do anymore, you can always ask me and my parents. I don't know what you'd ever need. Uh, the, the other day, I, I tweeted out, I was, I was playing Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, and I was at the uh, Little Mermaid part, <laughs> which, which I have a story See, involving my dad saying. of him coming in to be like, hey I son, what are you story. playing? And I was playing the sing-along part story. of Little Mermaid 2, and when I tweeted out I was playing it again, Brandon tweeted at me, well, your dad can't walk in on you this time. And like, I thought that was pretty funny. See, I, I'm not the kind of person who would find that funny. No, stage. I get other people not finding funny. Yeah. Like, I don't crack these jokes to my dad's sisters. I would never. I don't even no, do it. Like, I don't do it to my mom. I don't do it to either of my brothers. But that might, like, it would be okay to bring that up to me. Like, if you were like, remember that time your dad walked in on you playing that game? Like, I would like that. Because I think that that kind of humor is a good way to deal with it. But saying, like, your dad can't do it anymore would just make me cry. I think it's funny. That's fine. <laughs> but I, uh... But no, like, everyone handles it differently. I'm like, angry that your father is dead. Like, say your father passed, I wouldn't say that no, about your dad. No, you know. Until I knew you were cool with it. I would never be cool with it. Well, no. But, but you already knew that. It, say if you were. Yeah. That, well, like... I say that, though, maybe. No, I'd be really... I don't know how you handle it. If my dad was dead now, I'd be really messed up. It, well, part of it helps that I don't live here. So, like, I didn't see him every day. Yeah, but I've, I moved out before. If he died while I was in China, I'd be a... It'd just be a mess. Yeah. I mean, I lie to myself and say that helps. Might. I don't know. I think it helps that you don't not talk about it. I think any talking about it you do helps you. Well, of course it does. Yeah. I teared up when I left the house about it. Yeah. Because I was going to go to the cemetery. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Gender. My dad was a straight male. Yes. He uh. gave me a big drunk kiss in the cheek <laughs> once while I was in a bikini. But I still love your father. So it doesn't matter. He was allowed. See, okay. So I want to know how... Because this fascinates me, too. Because we were talking about this before I hit record. At how people sort of raise themselves, I guess. Because, like, my parents are not perfect. They did not raise me, like, amazingly. And my dad is kind of a racist. But I wouldn't say I'm racist. <laughs> but, like, that's definitely... You're def- not racist like your father was. Like, no. I love your I parents, but socially you're a step up. Well... 
Well, I also think that's the goal. Is yeah. when you raise kids, make sure make them better than I you. I think that they did that. But like, for example, to like not go into crazy detail, um, I have a brother who's close in age, and we are two completely different people on a societal level. <laughs> yes. But we have the same parents. That's what I was just asking you about. Like, I don't understand how your brother turned out to be the way he is, and you are the way you. Are. I used to tell my mom that. I'd be like, Mom, you know, like Colin's parents are this way. And his brother is this way, but Colin is like. Well, I think I'm amazing. actually the uh, the anomaly because, like, my older brother is much more like my younger brother. Yeah. But like, he's, I mean, he's forty years old now. He's shaped up and is fine now. Yeah. But he wasn't. That's what I mean. Like, Colin finished school. He's got a stable <laughs> job, doing what he wants to be doing with his. I mean, cl- you know, close to it. Like, yeah. you're not. You know, like, I went to school for teaching. Now we're at call center. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think it's a, it's a choice I made. I could go teach if I wanted to. Yeah. But, like, you, you, you set goals and you accomplish them, and then you're a nice person and you This care is about getting your a friend. little too circle jerky. Why? I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like <laughs> circle jerking you. It's true. Yeah, but it, that makes it worse. Why? I prefer compliments that are just clearly false. I don't, I don't like being told nice things. So, so I don't care if you don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I always thought it was really cool and good that it happened to you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Take the compliment, bitch. I, I it's will. Fine. But just, it's not. It's not very easy. But it's good. That I, I have a living of making fun of myself. I know, but you should also hear the things about yourself that are amazing, and those are them. That you set goals and you, <laughs> you set goals and you accomplish them. You do what you want. You like. You talk to me on Facebook and your other friends still. You live in Halifax. We still talk. Yes. It's also because yeah. I message you, but yes. You know, two-way streets. But that's like, those things, you should be proud of those things. Back to gender. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Or, or, or uh, social justice thing. I can't, I'm... Per- the fact that it's like called social justice and people hate it makes me It's sad. so weird. Because like, it, 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 the minute you put that word to it, you assume that everything the person is saying about it, aka me, is insane. And I'm trying to be well, good. not insane. Okay, so like... Because I don't most think my people, opinions are crazy. Most people are on the side of the law. The law is justice. So why is it so weird when you call something social justice? It's suddenly nonsense. Because Tumblr... Tumblr made it a bad thing. Tumblr has said some very bad things. So, like, there's this there's this post on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. I don't want to bring it up because it's stupid. But it, it lists all the possible genders you can be. And there are, like, 68 of them. It is not something that people use. That's not true. Who uses that? Some of the genders are like freeze gender, gender blender. Like people don't call them. In a official, um, I don't know if it's parliament or senate, whatever they have in Germany, but they listed that there were 62 of them. See, I think we should have three, male, female, and fuck it. Like that's it. A gender. Like it just, there's a binary and then you like don't want to be in the binary. Well, yeah, I'm all for, like when. As soon as you start naming, like I get that, but if if gender is a social construct, if it is. Then, gen- then your genders can be infinite. You can oh, choose whatever a- gender you want. I've been waiting. You don't want to list them. It looks stupid. I've been waiting to talk about this story. For- oh, and it just divides us as people. Before I ever started a podcast, I always wanted to talk about this story to somebody. Uh, and it's we kind of weave into Joe. Jeff- it, it. I don't think gender is... I think gender is both. I don't think it's one or the other. Both a construct and a... Yes. What's the other construct in a reality i mean i'll just i'll just keep it simple and say nature and nurture i think it's both yeah it's both because answer that question is both um but that means some people can be like i don't like this i don't feel this way so th- there's a story from the 70s that i'm way too familiar with uh, of, <laughs> of a a man named david reimer who i don't remember the full details but he was born with <laughs> some sort of defect to his penis so his parents just cut it off and raised him as a girl. All right. And changed his name to Brenda. All right. That's, that's not good, but okay. It, well, th- this is basically the argument for, like, no matter even if you're raised as a girl, if you're a guy, one part of that will never change. It doesn't matter how many people tell you. I don't know where I'm going with this. You mean that, like, he's biologically male. Yes. And so even though... No he, matter how even much... Even though they try to nurture him as yes. a female... His the body. nature still plays a role. That happens today, though. Like yes. I heard, I, I don't know if it's true. But I heard that sometimes if babies are born with like a penis that's not quite right, they just cut it off and they're a girl. Mm-hmm. But well, then they like well, they they grow up and they're like, no, I'm not a girl. Yeah. Long story short, this it, it drove uh, at the time something... Brenda insane. Yeah, so. of course it was because he was. They're like, well, because also in the '70s, trans wasn't like super well known. No, it was just coming out. Thanks, Marsha. That's not me. <laughs> that's a girl named Marsha in the '70s. Anyway. 
We just happen to have the same name. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they later uh, killed themselves. But yeah. But yeah, that I think that's just more of a, a PSA to parents who like don't go crazy out of your way to like gender your kids. Well, gender or not gender, like don't shove it down your throat. Don't shove it down people's throats that they're neither. Because if they think they're a guy, let them be a guy. If they yeah. think they're a girl, let them be a girl. Yeah. Don't be like, no, that's bad. Yeah, you can't like, <laughs> you can't unteach a construct. Even if it is, just, even if it was, even if gender was 100% a social construct. You can't, you can't just raise kids not to be part of it. Okay. You can't just be like, so I know that our society is organized like this, but you're not going to be allowed to be part of that. There's a there's work. a there's a cartoon on Disney that probably hasn't aired in twelve years. Lloyd in Space. Oh, I know that. I know it. Okay, there's an episode in Lloyd in Space where it's which, where there's it's an alien's birthday, mm-hmm. and that alien is the third gender. They're neither. And when they hit puberty on their thirteenth birthday, they pick guy or girl. Do you think that would be beneficial to have? No, because when I was thirteen, I hated. Most 13-year-olds have a really skewed idea of gender. Like, I would have wanted to be a boy. Because when I was 13, I hated girls. Yes. I was like, girly shit's stupid. Pink is dumb. And I think that a lot of young women feel that way. Because society's like, fem- female things are weak and bad. Like, like, it's the same reason Like I can walk around wearing men's clothes. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird, but no one's going to beat me up and call me weak. If you were walking around in a dress... I've worn your skirts before. Yeah, but walk around in public, I, I mean. pull it off. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, yes. feminine seems is weak and lesser. So well, I mean, kid, like... I don't think it's a good time. Because you're not deciding based on how you feel. You'd be deciding what you think is cooler. That's true. Right? You're not deciding, like, oh, I feel like a girl, so I Oh, okay, what girl. if it was until you're, like, 25? So you can actually, like... Be sure. Be an adult about the decision. Yeah, then you can choose one. I think it'd be good... Because most people would be cis. I would choose girl. But then people who aren't could be like, I have been a woman this whole time. And then just, they would get the body of a woman if they wanted it. Which is basically what we have now, anyway. Yeah. So, I wish technology was a little bit better. Though there's a whole thing with, like, passing, but it doesn't matter. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, People think that if you're, let's say you're a trans woman, you Mm. have to pass as a woman in order to be considered a trans woman. So, like, you know, trans women have deep voices sometimes. They don't pass. Okay, so <laughs> I think, you know, it's dumb for me to say this because I'm sure you agree with this point, that if someone wants to be a woman or a man, even if they don't look it, like say they haven't taken any hormones, they don't, like they still dress like what they appear as, but they are like, no, I'm this, call me this. Why don't people just call them what they want to be called? I don't get the problem. Makes them uncomfortable. That's dumb. It's like, um, for example, so our friend Graham is a gender. Mm-hmm. So I say they to him. To, I just almost said him again. I'm, I'm working on it. But I say they when I'm around them. And with friends, I call them a they. Mm-hmm. My parents, I still call Graham a him. Because I don't know how to explain it well, to Okay, them. so. And that would make them uncomfortable and me uncomfortable. The they, the him, her, they, them thing is the hardest thing for me. Still. <laughs> Anyone who wants to be called any of them, if I met them as not what they want to be called, I will constantly slip that up. I do too, but that's like when you watch when you watch videos of like top ten things age gender people are tired of hearing. That's like on that list every time. Probably. Yeah. So. But I, I, I honestly I don't care because that's tr- it's just. True. I know it's it's difficult, and I <laughs> I screwed up with Graham all the time because I've known Graham for like seven years. But well, because the thing is, I usually will just just say Graham. Yeah, I also, or just say their name and then it eliminates the problem entirely. I find they hard, like, mentally, because I still think of it as more than one person. Now, Sam, I've actually tried to... I've been actively trying to use they more often, even if my friends don't go by that. I just say them, so when I'm talking about someone, the person I'm talking to doesn't know if I'm talking about a guy or a girl. I just say, yeah, they said this. There are actually sometimes in speech where they or them is what you use. I saw, like, there's that, there's that post online that's saying, like, say, like, you have to use boy or girl when you, if you don't. Just say he, she if you don't know what gender they are. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious because they use they in that sentence. And that is an appropriate place to use the word they when you don't know the gender yes. in, in vernacular. So sometimes it's normal, but other times it feels weird. 
but I don't care that it feels weird. Just do it anyway. And the more often you do it, the less weird it feels. Uh, rolling back to, to Tumblr. <laughs> Because uh, because I because I, I saw this earlier. Okay, so I'm sure people have seen the news. Personally, I don't care. We talked about it briefly yesterday. Doctor Who's a woman now. Yay! Cool. Bye. Um, I saw yeah. legitimate anger. Yeah. That she is not a black trans woman. Oh, this is because, because it's not progressive enough. Well, okay. There's a problem in third wave feminism and all most feminism where it's all like white women go go go. So people tend to get like they get kind of roll their eyes and like a white woman is somewhere where it's usually a man because mm -hmm. everyone's cheering but like black women are like good for you another white girl i mean that makes sense no i follow but at the same time the anger is probably unnecessary i mean i don't i, I this again like i'm a white woman so i don't i like, kind of i get their anger because i look at billboards and movies and posters and magazines and doctor pamphlets white 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 well white, i think I, I agree with what someone commented on is like I understand maybe the frustration, but at the same time, like, hey, maybe let's not all be so negative and celebrate that it's still a victory. I think that's a white privilege thing, though. To be, sure. To Guess be what? like, I'm white. I know, but that's the reason you're not angry, and the reason I wouldn't be angry is because we don't deal with it. Like, sure, white people everywhere. You don't know what I mean? No, I don't. Okay. But like, I don't. It's a privilege not to be angry. So like, I, this is a really bad example because the movie was terrible. But like, Johnny Storm was a, a black man in the last Fantastic Four movie. Uh, did I care? No, I was like, cool. I hope it does well. But it's different though. No, because it should be like, well, because some people were legitimately excited. Like, yes, yeah, African American playing Johnny Storm. That's great. That's great. But I guess my my argument is more like people just shouldn't be angry. People just need to chill. Well, I wish society was at a point where it wouldn't. It didn't matter that it was a white woman or a black woman because because there was enough representation for both that people wouldn't get angry. But I imagine if you're born as a black woman and watching Hollywood TV, you're tired of white people. Transracialism. Let's let's go there. That's not a real thing. I did a bunch of research about that after you. Someone brought you brought it up to me. Rachel Dolezal. I don't know who that is. And that's the big story. That's that's one story of one person doing that. I actually looked up. What it, people don't do that. That's the one person in the whole world that decided that. Well, I'm sure thing. other people have done it. It's just she it's was probably a... just as popular as uh, fuck. What is it called? Where you think you're a cat? A furry. No, no <laughs> furries. Furries have a persona, but they're like not literally. I'm a cat. I don't know what it is. I mean, to me, that's what all is just it? no like other kin. Yes, it's probably just as popular as other kin and. Anyway, we can talk about it, but I'm not going to legitimize it because it's not a real problem. Okay, well, okay, so the problem, the only reason why I find specifically the story of her interesting is because, like, I don't really agree with it either. Like, I, I honestly do think it's kind of stupid. Does she think she's transracial? Yes. Yeah, it's dumb. But, like, do you know anything about her? And that's the only reason why it makes it interesting. No. Okay, so she was the head of the NAACP, which is a, like a charity group of some sort for African Americans and she was the head of it <coughs> she was a fantastic human being for the black community but then she came out with this nonsense I'm like it really sucks that you're actually a fantastic person outside of this one aspect which know. is the only reason why it made the story interesting I think because... that like she just, just shouldn't have called it transracial no it was a dumb thing like to be like I really connect with the black community because I've lived and worked with them for such a long time would be a perfectly acceptable sentence yeah or to be like well, I guess really... Well, like, I feel more of a connection to this community than I do my own white people because I live and work here. Like, that's not a crazy thing to say. No, I guess what but if But to she... be like, I feel like I'm a black person and I'm going to equate that to being transgender is and... a really crazy thing to say. A little bit. Yeah. Try wasn't thinking. I've said dumb shit before, too. We all have. We've all been <coughs> teenagers. Right? I've said dumb stuff before. I remember my first university class... The teacher asked us if I, if I thought sexism was happening still, and I said no, apparently. So apparently before university, I was like, sexism's not real. I mean, I think we've gotten to the bottom of it. I, I think we've we've solved sexism <laughs> here today. Oh, obviously. Oh, but yeah, it's just the transgender thing was one case. Probably as popular as other kin. We can talk about other kin. We can talk about other kin relating to furries. No. Yeah, come on. What about the difference? Okay, actually. Okay, <laughs> okay so actually, what? I need to say a good thing. Okay, so I. Furries are amazing. Publicly shit on furries a lot. Everyone it's, does. it's not so much. I, no, but the thing is, people have this assumption that I actually hate furries. Furries, vegan, and nickelback are three things you're allowed to hate. Furries, vegans, and nickelback. The thing is, like, if someone 
I will always shit on furries. If someone sends me a picture of an animal, or even someone with, like, <laughs> fur on their jacket, I'm like, you fucking furry. <laughs> I hate it so much, but people think it's real hate. They're like, well, what if I was actually a furry? I'm like, well, then I still like you. Like, I don't actually hate furries. It's just a it's thing just to an, hate. It's also an acceptable thing to hate. But you're allowed to hate it. Because I know you still haven't watched the show. Glow. I has watched it. An other, okay, that's fantastic. Has, has another, another kin. kin. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, like, get it? I don't get other kin. No. I get it in her case because she doesn't look like she's suffering. No. But I like when like a when a person is like I'm other kin and I'm a dog and I don't work because I'm a dog. I'm like you need a job. Okay. You can't that, run away from your adult responsibilities. Too far. And you sound crazy. And I don't mean you sound crazy because I don't agree with what you're saying. I mean you sound mentally unwell. Like go to a therapist. Maybe you are other kin, but I also don't think you can actually be a dog if you're. So a you're kid. fine with people who are like other kin on the weekends. No, I don't know how to what I'm fine with. I'm not fine if... Because they, they, their stance is that they're not human. But you're biologically, physiologically, mentally, hormonally a human being. You have, you have the chromosomes of a human being. Yes. So for you to say you feel like you're not a human, I'm like, how can you feel that but, way? You okay, physically so, so here's how I feel about it. But then, I mean, I'm not them. What do I know? Maybe they can feel that way. As long as you pay know. your taxes... I, that's harmless, right? I don't care what you identify as. Right, that's the as. other thing is, as long as it's harmless, I don't care, but I don't think it's harmless. I think other kids are not. Because furries are like, I like to dress up as this animal. This is my first owner. This is what I do. I, I love it. I like to dress up as it and kiss other people dressed as animals. And for some reason, I'm okay with that because they take their first suit off and then they're a human. And they, they know that it's, it's like cosplay. Like, but I also I think, think... I don't know. Like, how many adults are other kin? Like, to me, other kin strikes me as something that, like, you do as a teenager, and then you just kind of get out Hopefully of it. Hopefully get out of it. But I'm worried that if it's something that we say is okay, and then they keep doing it, and... I don't... I just don't know if it's okay. Like, I don't know if this story is true, because it came from Tumblr, but there's, like, this infamous story of a, a girl calling child services on her parents because they wouldn't feed her diamonds because she was dragon kin yeah. and dragon owns only eat gems and so child services got involved and I assume nothing happened because yeah. nothing see, was that's wrong not, that's not okay <laughs> eat diamonds or I die so we need to talk about other kid nice <coughs> aren't you happy to have me on the show I can't breathe I'm, I'm glad to have someone who will talk to me about these things because Duncan never will well, I don't know. I, I read, I watched a documentary, of, not a documentary, a long video about fairies once, and I was decided they were fine. I mean... Other kids different. Just, I, I don't have any issues with it, I guess. But yeah, Glow. I didn't like Glow. What? I know. But, like, to me, it comes across as there's these two men in charge of all these women. And they're, like, dressed like this, and there's a whole bunch of racist humor in it. Why would you think I would like that? I thought it was good. It's... I've only, I saw four episodes. I don't remember there being racist humor in it. They literally give I'm sure they give is. a girl from India a turban oh, right, and that a part. machine gun, and okay. she's like, "I don't want to do this." So that part is because this is like loosely based off a real story. Yeah, but I'm not saying that doesn't mean it's okay. But I'm saying there are things about it's it. Being true to it. It see like it seems. Don't like, listen to Marsha. Glow is a fantastic show. <laughs> it seems like it's trying to get away with. Two gross men objectifying women in a way that I'm supposed to be okay with. You know what I mean? Sure. Do you do you actually know what I mean? No. No, I, no, I, I follow. I disagree, but I follow. Like, it's like trying... Also, the main character is a shitbag. She's a bad person. No, I know, and that's great. <laughs> More main characters need to be garbage. She's trash. Yeah, she's terrible. She's the worst. Even, like, she admits to cheating. She's like, it's mm -hmm. only one time, but it wasn't. It was twice. She lies. Yeah. No, she's terrible. I love it. She's just so awful. But I don't like that the... I liked it at the beginning, and then it turned into, like, the two guys were controlling what the women were wearing and doing. Yes. And then I didn't like it so much. I still like it. And it has this whole underlining, underlying, underlining of, like, women on each other for the sake of people finding it hot. Well, that's literally why it exists. I mean, GLOW stands for Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Like, they was selling the tits. But there's a documentary about the actual yes. event that I probably would like. I actually have been... Since watching the show, I actually do want to watch the I'm not huge on the show. I don't know. I didn't hate it. I, I think those are valid concerns. Yeah. And, like, I don't watch TV, so unless I'm really enthralled, I don't keep watching shows. 
I have to be like really into it. I literally don't watch. I'm not watching any TV shows right now, and it's been that way for ten months. Uh, am I watching anything? So don't I don't, think don't so. keep watch Glow, guys. It's fine. It's just or don't <laughs> or don't. We don't care. It's probably fine. <laughs> it's I liked um what I like about it. I like the black chick who uh, coaches them. She is a real life wrestler, and that's why she does such a good job. Oh yeah, and I like her, and I like the best friend with the blonde hair. Yeah. And a lot of the jokes are funny, but I didn't like that racist joke or the Chinese. She's not even Chinese, right? She's from. She's Th- from Thailand. Thailand or the Philippines, and they're yeah. just like, no, you're Japanese. Yeah, like it was just, and it's like it's supposed to be okay, but it's a product of its time. I know, but it, it it's just stupid. Okay, here's stupid. I'm gonna throw a quote funny. at you because okay, so there, <coughs> if I could tell anyone to watch any show that's come out in the last year, yeah, it will. I will yell it. Forever, and I think the show's on Hulu, which Ooh. is unfortunate because nobody has Hulu. Okay. Uh, but you can also just watch it all online. Please don't pirate it. I'm such a like stick in the mud about pirating. I pirate the first episode, and if I like it, I'll pay for it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, it's called Horace and Pete. Um, I think it's one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. But there's a quote from that show that always sticks with me, not because I agree with it, but because I think it's just. A, I think it's funny. B, it's like one of the most sexist things I've ever heard. Uh, a character is asked if he uh, eats women out. And he says, I'm a man. I will never be below a woman. Why do you like that? No, I, I, I said it's a bad, like, <laughs> it's a bad thing to say. Yeah. Why would it resonate with you then? Because it was like the only thing in media that to my knowledge, has made me go, like, ugh. Oh, because you, like, had a visceral reaction yeah. to just how... Well, because, like... It's not even, like... As a guy, it needs to be, like, pretty overtly sexist or racist for me to be, like, oh. You're gross. <laughs> like the, like some of the guys from Orange is the New Black, where you're, like, yeah, you're a pig. Like, no one would like you. But, like I said, that kind of sexism is just totally irrelevant to the conversation. Yes. Like, it's just, like, no, you're just terrible. Well, I mean, the character... Like, even... The even, character was written as a piece yeah, of Yeah, right? So even people who are like, no, sexism is not a big problem in the West are still like, no, like, that person's trash. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll end on... <laughs> we'll end on this. How do you feel about... Because I see people getting flagged for it. When someone writes in a movie or a book or yeah. a television show, writes a sexist character, some people think that means the author is just using that to, like, let out their sexism and not they wrote a garbage character because... No, they man. just wanted a no, garbage person. I will, I will clarify. I will clarify this. So, so just because you write about a character doesn't mean you are that character. Yes. For example, my, one of my favorite books is Lolita. Mm-hmm. It's all about a pedophile. The author's not a pedophile. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I don't know, no, <laughs> but if he, he was asked that question. He's like, nope, it's not why I wrote it. He wrote it because you're supposed to read it and go like, ew, what the fuck? This yes. is disgusting. Holy shit. And I'm like... I write about, I mean, like, one of my main characters of a book I never finish starts out as, like, an asshole who uses words I would never use when he swears Mm -hmm. and does things I would never do and hurts people in ways I would never hurt people. I don't agree with any of his behavior. If you just write characters that are reflections of yourself, you're a shitty writer. That's fair. Yeah. You can write some characters that are reflections of yourself, but the point of your books should not be to... I mean, if it, it can be to push an agenda, I guess, but that's boring. I think most good literature brings up questions and says, don't know. <laughs> I guess. That's fair. I think. So, no, that's stupid. <laughs> just because a char- just cause you have a character who's like, super racist. It doesn't mean it's unless, you. Unless, like, the book ends with that character being right and the hero and his or her or their opinions. So, like, as long as everyone else in the book agrees that that person is garbage or like if that person like no one ever fights but at the end he gets killed terribly then obviously the author's sending a clear message like i don't agree with this that's fair or if there's like a neutral ending and he's just his opinions are there the whole time but they're never like i don't know no, all right yeah we'll end it there okay uh because i want to play kingdom hearts yay uh so yay so, yay, you can talk about gender. Next time we can talk about something that's not gender. It's actually pretty sexist. The first time you have a woman on your show, you just want to talk about sexism. Well, I've actually wanted <laughs> to talk joking. about it for a while. I'm just joking. I'm well, joking. I'm sure you are, but 
Because there's shit I want to talk about. We did talk about romance, so you're good. I'm not like the token girl of the podcast. <laughs> well, next time you come on, maybe, maybe we'll talk about something We can else. just talk about gay romance. But, I mean, also, this is literally what we were talking about yesterday on, yeah. like, not being recorded. We can talk about Valerian, though. Valerian. Yes. Doesn't matter. Uh, so... We can talk about sci-fi. I'm yes. so well-versed this time. We'll talk about sci-fi yes. next time. Yes. So, that's the podcast. Uh, this is the first one. Post... It existing on iTunes. So please go to iTunes. Like and subscribe. No. <laughs> well, you can. Okay. It, well, I put this on YouTube too. So. Oh, okay, like that, and that is subscribe. Applicable. I'll say it for him so he doesn't have to. Uh, all the links are in the description of uh, my... Do you want to plug your Tumblr? I plug mine. Yeah, I'll plug my Tumblr, but it's hard to spell, so... It'll be in the description. If, if you like Marsha, she, she has a Tumblr. She has a... It's mostly oh. anime. Well, you get the writing one. Oh, yeah, you can check my writing one. My writing one's not that interesting. Yeah. It's just Shadowhunters. I guess if you <laughs> if like you Shadowhunters... Like, if you like Shadowhunters... I have 3,000 followers. <laughs> you can be 3,001. Uh, you don't have to, though. It's okay. All the links are in the description. It's a drug, guys. Social media is a drug. Because I... Yep, don't count sure, your likes. Sure is. <laughs> uh, it is customary for us on the way out to recommend an anime... Oh, so, so what Yuri, are you going to throw out? God, Yuri on Ice. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. So. <laughs> but no, but listen, people who figure skate professionally watch it because it's good. It's good. It's good. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so good. Okay, no, I can recommend so many shitty anime. Reborn. I've already done that. Shit. I beat you to that. <laughs> um, um, we'll go with Yuri on Ice. Watch, watch Yuri on Ice. It's good. 